everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We had 11 drivers in seven different states over the weekend, so let's get started. Anthony Alfredo was at Sonoma Raceway for the NASCAR Cup Series Toyota Save Mart 350. Anthony had to start last due to a team penalty during pre-race inspection. Anthony started his move towards the front and was setting 16th when NASCAR threw the competition yellow on lap 10. The front row motorsports team stuck to their race strategy throughout the race and was positioned for a top 10 or better finish before getting spun out with only two laps remaining. Let's check in with Anthony for a post-race recap. In the beginning, coming to these road courses, I've never been super optimistic because I've only run about four or five now in my entire career in a stock car and been putting a ton of work in trying to figure them out. Never been to Sonoma Raceway, my first lap was the green flag and strategy fell our way. We got the track position we needed and we were on equal tires with the comp competition. It was an opportunity to, to show how we stack up against the best and we were going to finish top 10, ran in the top five for a while there, but cautions bred cautions and we just got shipped in there and had nowhere to go and ended up wrecked. Uh, we had an opportunity for a really great finish, but uh, everyone who watched the race knows what happened. And I just hope that uh, we prove we're capable of today and that I proved, uh, you know, that I can, I can run with these guys. Wow, that was a tough one. You could hear the passion and disappointment in his voice. Up next for Anthony, Texas Motor Speedway on June 13th for the All-Star Open. Joey East made his Arkham Menards West Road Course debut at Sonoma Raceway in his number 54, My Job Depends on Ag Ford. Joey had a super fast Nate Clower Motorsports prepared entry, qualifying fifth, was running in fourth when he missed a shift that caused engine damage ending his day early. Joey said he learned a lot and looks forward to returning to the road course at Portland International Raceway on September 10th. But up next for Joey, Arkham Menard Series East at Southern National Motorsports Park this weekend. Jesse Love had a rough day at Sonoma Raceway for the Arkham Menards West General Tire 200. Jesse was involved in an incident on lap one of practice. The team got the car repaired, but he had limited practice time. He qualified eighth, was running seventh when they suffered a gear failure. Again, the BMR team got him back on track, but the gear damage was so bad, it damaged the transmission, ending their day early. Up next for Jesse, Super Late Models with Wimmer Motorsports on June 9th at Berlin Raceway. Caden Huddycutt turns in a dominant performance in the car's late model at Larry King Law's Langley Speedway by putting his number four Justin Johnson Racing Ford on the pole, then he led every lap on his way to his first victory in the series. Let's get a post-race recap from the driver. Hey everybody, it's Kane Honeycutt here, back from Langley Speedway in the Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour Series. Picked up the win at Langley Speedway, sat on the pole, led flag to flag. Car was just amazing. Uh, thanks to all my team, Justin Johnson Racing, Jason Stanley, Marcus Richmond, RNS Race Cars. Uh, we just worked together the entire weekend. Me and Justin finished 1-2. Uh, it was just an awesome sight to see and a, a big confidence booster for the entire organization. And these wins are really hard to come by, and these don't happen very often. So to be able to win in our rookie year, uh, just a big accomplishment. And we built up our points in the rookie of the year as well, and we gained a lot of points in the, in the overall standings. So I just can't thank all my sponsors, Greg Harper, uh, Race Race Brain Development, Friends of Jacklin Foundation, ARC Aviation, Ryko Motorsports, uh, the entire Justin Johnson organization, uh, everybody that just laid a hand on my career at this part of the year. I still can't believe it, just soaking it all in. Can't soak it in all too much. We got Boyd Friday night and Big O Speedway on Saturday in the dirt late model. Uh, 1,000 to win both the races. So we're really looking forward to that. Again, thank you every single one of my supporters for everything y'all have done for me. We can't wait till the rest of the year in the Cars Tour, and we got a lot more races to win uh, in the next couple, next couple of weeks. His next Cars Tour race is at Dominion Raceway on June 19th, but Caden will be wheeling that dirt late model in two races over the weekend. 
Joel Valento was also at Langley Speedway for the Cars Tour. Visit Hampton.com 125. Let's check in with Joe for his take on the weekend. Hey guys, Joe Valento just finished up at Langley Speedway for the Visit Hampton 125. A tough race for us. Uh, we lost an axle. Rear axle broke in qualifying and uh, the whole race we had a vibration and the car was jerking uh, whenever I would start grabbing the throttle. So just an unfortunate end for the night for us. I think we would have had a really good car. It was fast all day in practice. Um, but just can't thank everyone at DGR, the entire crew here today. They worked their absolute butts off trying to get the car ready for the feature race and just appreciate all the hard work today. Would also like to thank Ford Performance, Nitro Lubricants, Nap Auto Parts, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, and Race Face Brand Development. Up next for Joe, Cars Tour Race at Dominion Raceway on June 19th. Grant Thompson made the most of his home track debut in his number 38 Kurt Britt Motorsports Pro Late Model at Mobile International Speedway by leading every lap and parking it in Victory Lane. Grant had this to say after the race. What's going on guys, Grant here. Just want to tell you all about this past Saturday's race at Mobile International Speedway in the number 38 Kurt Britt Motorsports Pro Late Model had a really good race. Um, due to the weather, we weren't able to qualify, but the car was really good in practice. We had a short practice session, about 10 minutes, and we made a few adjustments to it throughout the session. Really good, and uh, ended up starting fourth in the feature because of the draw, because of because of weather issues. But uh, made up to the lead early on in the race and uh, and led most of it, and you know we ended up coming out with the win, so that was really good. Can't thank PFC Brakes enough, Kirkman Motorsports, Air Bodies. Just had a really good race uh, upcoming this upcoming Saturday, uh, round two of the Tundra Super Late Model Series. We'll see you guys there. Up next for Grant, Tundra Super Late Models at Marshville Motor Speedway on June 12th. Bryce Mazanson was at South Sound Speedway for round three of the Northwest Super Late Model Series. Bryce qualified fifth, but the top eight qualifiers drew a number, one out of eight, out of a hat to determine their starting position. And Bryce pulled the number seven for the start, but quickly made his way up to fifth and was catching the laters when the car started to get loose and fell off the pace. On the next caution, he went off track to make an adjustment and was able to get the lucky dog position late and battle his way back to ninth. Bryce currently leads the points heading into Hermiston Raceway on June 19th. On another note, Bryce High School's graduation fell on race night, so he had his ceremony in the pits now that is a racer. Gavin Graham took his number 38 Kurt Britt Motorsports truck to Mobile International Speedway for round two of the Gulf Coast Racing Series. Gavin started P1 after the pill draw, experienced a rain delay, several restarts, but he led every lap, notching his eighth win of the season. Up next for Gavin, Legend Cars at Atlanta Motor Speedway's Thursday Thunder on June 10th, then he heads to 417 Southern Speedway in the Pro Truck on June 12th. Our newest race face driver, Hudson Bulger, was at Atlanta Motor Speedway for round two in the INEX Legend Car Thursday Thunder Series, where he had to bring out a backup car, but he was still able to manage a 10th place finish in the Young Lions class. Up next for Hudson, back to Atlanta Motor Speedway on Wednesday and Thursday night for rounds two and three, and possibly a trip to Chris Motor Sports Park in Cordell, Georgia, if his car is ready. Carter Whalen competed at Metro Atlanta Quarter Midget Association in Brazelton, Georgia. Carter raced in two different classes. In heavy Honda, he would battle his older brother, who actually won the race, and Carter finished in third. He also took the opportunity to jump in his new Landon Cox Racing Ultimate Quarter Midget Heavy World Formula. Since he was the only Heavy World Formula, he would run with the lights, but was still credited with a heavy class win. Up next, Heavy Honda Cup in Salisbury, North Carolina on June 11th and 12th. Landon Cox was also at Atlanta Metro QMA, where he continues to break track records in qualifying breaking his own track record by two tenths. 
However, he spun himself out on lap one and then raced his way back to a second place finish. I was talking with his dad, Danny, and he said he's been talking to the racing gods about taking a fast time and a P1 starting position for a win. Landon, the wins will come. Up next for Landon, USAC National Quarter Midgets at Northwest Ohio QMA on June 24th. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Sheldon Creed in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series at Texas Motor Speedway on Saturday, June 12th. Cassidy Hines will be at All American Speedway for the SRL Pro Play Model Series on June 12th. Jake Bowman will be at State Line Speedway for his Super Late Model debut on June 10th, then at Hermiston Speedway in the Pro Late Model on June 11th and 12th. Brody Moore will be back in his Super Late Model at Colorado National Speedway on June 12th. We would like to congratulate all of the Race Face graduates. Cassidy Hines graduated from Arvada High School. Joey East graduated from Stone Ridge Christian High School. Bryce Bizanson graduated from Cedar Park Christian High School. And Connor Mozak graduated from High Point University with a degree in entrepreneurship. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at Race Face TV On Demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out the Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite Race Face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week, I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.